My name is Katherine Anderson, and I'm the Special Advisor to the President on Aboriginal Affairs at Memorial University. My position is, um, as I said, Special Advisor to the President, um, but it's a, a position that is uh, pan-university and multi-campus. So uh, here at Memorial, we have um, several campuses, uh, the St. John's campus and the Marine Institute, uh, here in St. John's, as well as the new Signal Hill campus, as well as the Grenfell campus in Cornerbrook and the Labrador Institute in Happy Valley Goose Bay in Labrador. Um, so again, as I said, my position is Penn University. I work with multiple, well, really all um, academic units, academic support units, uh, non-academic units right across the university um, to advance um, Indigenous education, Indigenous, indigenous initiatives um, to support um, Indigenous students here. Well, the position was created out of a task force report. Um, the task force was established uh, about 10 years ago, um, and the mandate of the task force was to look at ways that the university could enhance um, recruitment of Indigenous students and their success once they get here at the university. Um, the task force was comprised of members from the university community and from the Indigenous groups in the province. Um, and there, out of that report, there were a number of recommendations. And one of the recommendations was to create a position at a senior administrative level within the university to um, I guess, provide leadership and coordination of all um, matters uh, around um, Indigenous uh, student success, Indigenous programming here at the university. So I think, um, so the report came out in 2009, the position was created in 2011, um, and the um, first uh, person was in the position uh, for three years, and then I came on in March of 2015. Um, and then, as you know, in June of that year, um, the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada released their summary report, Universities Canada released their principles on Indigenous education, and I think that just really changed the national conversation around what was happening. Um, not that obvious, there were a lot of things happening to varying degrees, I think, across the, in universities across the country. But I think that moment in time really um, brought things um, to people's attention in a way that has just really shifted things. Um, and I think... Uh, I think there was a lot of momentum created uh, from that. So what my position involved prior, or what this position um, focused on prior to that, um, and what it's focusing on since that time, I think has been a bit of a shift. So for example, um, when I, was hired in March or started in March, one of um, my responsibilities was to create a strategic plan for this office. Um, and that shifted now to creating an indigenization strategy for the university. So that's um, a much different, um, a much larger and broader scope than looking at a strategic plan for this office. Um, so in terms of measuring success, because I didn't answer your question, um, I think uh, I think the scope, the mandate of the role has shifted somewhat. So I think in terms of measuring what success is, is, um, is shifting and changing with that a little bit as well. Um, but if I, broadly speaking, I think, and I, and so, hmm, I think we want to see the success of Indigenous students here at Memorial University. Um, 
So obviously we'd like to see more Indigenous students coming to Memorial, but it also means um, ensuring their success once they're here at Memorial. Um, I think success also means that we're educating non-Indigenous students, the non-Indigenous population here at the University about Indigenous peoples and Indigenous histories in this province and country. I think success also um, is about engaging um, respectfully with the Indigenous um, peoples, Indigenous governments, Indigenous communities, Indigenous organizations um, throughout the province and the country. Um, and exactly what that looks like, um, I guess, as we're working through the development of our Indigenization strategy, um, some of those things will be, I guess, more clearly articulated. One of the uh, things that we identified from the outset was the importance of engaging with Indigenous peoples here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, I think as Indigenous peoples, we're all too familiar with uh, policies and programs being developed um, by governments or agencies outside of the community and then having um, those documents um, brought forward sometimes for consultations once they've already been developed, um, which does not really provide for any meaningful contribution or um, input into what that looks like. Um, and we were cognizant of that and said at the outset that as we develop the strategy, we're going to be doing that with Indigenous communities here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So we were careful not to set ourselves a timeline that would that was too um, too tight. We wanted to make sure that we had sufficient time to engage with the communities. Um, and that's what we're doing from the outset. Um, and uh, so far we've um, met with Mi'kmaq communities um, here in Newfoundland. Um, and uh, I've traveled to Southern Labrador and met with communities in the Nunatuahu territory, um, went to Central Labrador, um, and met with um, folks in Inu in Shadjit, um, had a public meeting in Goose Bay, and uh, this month we'll be traveling to Nunatuahu in Northern Labrador. Um, and there are still some communities that um, we... Um, we'll be visiting here on the island as well. And I should also say, so um, this month we'll be visiting the north coast of Labrador, the Nunat Sivu communities, as well as Natwashish. I think Indigenous education is um, can be defined very broadly. I think first and foremost, it's for me um, looking at um, how we can incorporate Indigenous ways of knowing Indigenous ways of being, Indigenous ways of doing. And I know when we talk about um, Indigenization, broadly speaking, that's what we're looking at. And I think um, obviously it's it has to be, um, it's going to be different from place to place. Um, what that looks like in Newfoundland, even, in, even within our own province, it's going to be different for um, what that would mean for Mi'kmaq versus what it would mean for Inu or Inuit. Um, and again, then that's going to be different than what it might look like in Manitoba or Alberta. Um, so I think that's one of the things that, um, why it's really important for us to engage with the with Indigenous peoples here, to hear from them what Indigenous education means for them. Um, so as a university, I think it's important that we we incorporate that here into the programs and courses that we offer. But I think Indigenous education is also um, also provides the opportunity, like I said, for non-Indigenous people to learn about um, Indigenous peoples and histories. I think Indigenous education is also... Um, 
it's learning about our past, but it's also it also needs to look at what the needs and the priorities and the desires are of Indigenous peoples and communities today. When we think about us coming to university and what we want to do here, I think for for a lot of us, it's about how we can um, how we can go back and contribute and give back to our communities. Um, it, and it could be that, it might not be that, but I think it's it's giving um, people in our communities the opportunity and the option to do that. It's about listening to the communities and what um, where they are, what their needs are, um, what their hopes and desires are. Um, and looking at how, as a university, we can respond to that. Um, so one, for example, I mean, broadly speaking, I think universities right across the country are looking at ways that we can respond to the calls to action. Um, and I think if we look at um, education, if we look at nursing, if we look at social work, um, those are all fairly um, clearly defined and articulated in the um, in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. Um, and but then I think there are needs that might be um, specific to, for example, um, the Mi'kmaq in the, in the Miyabugek First Nation, or the Innu and Natwashish or Shejit, or um, Inuit groups in Northern and Southern Labrador. When we think about the university, broadly speaking, at, there's, there, we're a comprehensive university, so we have 15 uh, faculties and schools here at the St. John's campus alone. So we have a school of social work, we have a faculty of medicine, um, faculty of nursing, faculty of education, many others. Um, and I think um, what that looks like is going to be different in each one of those faculties and schools. Um, this month, we're starting a visiting elders program uh, in partnership with the School of Social Work. Um, so we'll be bringing in an elder from uh, different communities for a couple days a week. Um, and they'll be spending time with the Aboriginal Resource Office, so with um, Indigenous students here on campus, but also spending time at the School of Social Work where um, they'll be speaking um, to students in different classes throughout that day. Um, so I think that's one way of bringing community into university. I think um, a really important way to hear from our elders, to hear their knowledge, to hear um, their experiences, um, their wisdom, their ideas. Um, so that's one way. Uh, our faculty of medicine is also, um, for many years, been bringing community into or onto campus through their Aboriginal health initiative. Um, so they, um, they have an advisory board with representatives from each of the Indigenous groups here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And um, they also uh, develop modules for their medical students going through the program. So they're hearing about, um, about Indigenous peoples, about um, maybe approaching medicine and healing in, um, in more... Um, in ways other than what Western medicine might uh, traditionally teach. Um, I think there, so I think the, there are, you know, so many different ways of doing that. Um, I think it's bringing it into the university's consciousness of the importance of doing that in different ways. Of doing that. I think Memorial has uh, a pretty strong history of 
uh, working with Indigenous communities around language revitalization. We have a Department of Linguistics that um, has had faculty um, that have worked with uh, um, Inuktitut, with Inuimun, um, with uh, Cayuga, um, Oneida uh, languages in Ontario. Um, we have um, an Aboriginal languages archive. Um, and even going back, I, I think, um, like back in maybe the 60s and 70s, uh, there were faculty that worked um, with language revitalization. And just recently, the university has also hired a Canada Research Chair in Change, Adaptation and Revitalization of Aboriginal Languages. Um, <clears throat> so... Dr. Nicholas Welch is, uh, will be working with um, Indigenous groups here to, uh, to look at that and, and working with them to identify what their priorities are, what they would like to focus on around, um, just around the revitalization. So whether it's documentation, whether it's um, uh, how they um, can revital you know what he can do to support their revitalization efforts i think the the university and in particular the department um, of linguistics is interested in working with uh, indigenous groups to support them um, and to continue their efforts in language revitalization as well i know dr douglas warham um, has uh has done a lot of work um, with Inuit in Nunatsiwut as well, in around the language nest and other in the Rigala dialect. He did a lot of work around documenting um, the the last few speakers in Rigala um, around their unique dialect of Inuktitut. There's a lot of room for growth here at Memorial University. Um, I would like to see. Uh, more curriculum um, developed in throughout the the university in terms of uh, throughout the faculties and schools. Um, I know for many uh, for many individual faculty members, um, there is a great interest in bringing um, indigenous education, indigenous. Uh, perspectives into uh, their classrooms, um, which is which is great. Um, but I think broadly speaking, I'd like to see uh, more programs around Indigenous education. Um, I would like to see more Indigenous faculty members. I think that's a big priority here at the university. I'd like to know that Indigenous students feel that they're reflected in in every aspect here at the university, in curriculum, um, in the people that work here, so our faculty, our staff, um, in the, the physical spaces here at the university. Um, we had the, the pillar um, in the library that Jessica uh, painted. I think that's, you know, there we're making some advances but I think like I said I think there's a lot of room for growth and I'm excited to see where we're going to go in the next 10 years. I mentioned the task force report uh, earlier so uh, 10 years ago there the task force report um, identified well listed 22 recommendations for how we could enhance Aboriginal student recruitment and success here at the university. One of those 22 recommendations was to find increased space for, um, for Aboriginal students here at the St. John's campus. Um, currently, and at the time, there was a, a lounge and a couple of offices on the fourth floor of the University Centre. And um, the, the Aboriginal student lounge is small um, and was not adequate for um, the needs of our students here. So when the report came out, um, the, there was a committee struck to look at um, identifying a space 
here. And um, the committee looked at existing space to see where um, the Aboriginal Resource Office and the lounge could potentially move to. Um, and I think as they were looking at space, um, that kind of evolved into looking at renovating space. And then that, again, evolved into looking at building brand new space. So Aboriginal House, um, and that's just kind of a working name right now. That was a working name given to that um, probably five years ago. Um, and there was a space, a location identified on campus um, where a new, a brand new building will go. Um, and that would be for Aboriginal students, but it would be um, really for the whole university. Um, but um, but um, space where Aboriginal students could call their own um, and create, I think, a greater sense of belonging here. On, on the St. John's campus. Right now, there have been plans. Um, so we have, uh, it's, it's beyond just a concept. There is a concept, um, a, a design uh, developed for that building. It's, it's gone even further so that we have uh, shovel-ready plans in place. Um, but since the uh, drop in the price of oil a few years ago um, and the downturn in the provincial economy, we have not been able to secure the funds to begin construction of the building. Um, but it is still something that uh, is a, a priority for infrastructure here at Memorial um, and it's still on the, it's still something we are actively working on. I can say the numbers have increased but I wouldn't be able to tell you necessarily why. I don't know if it's because there, um, there's a, a, a greater comfort level in self-identifying, um, because I think we all know that we have, the numbers that we have are based on students who choose to self-identify. And we know not all students either want to self-identify or feel comfortable in identifying. Um, and um, and also, in particular, in this province, with the um, the creation of the Halibu First Nation in 2011, um, and a number of younger people learning about their their Mi'kmaq ancestry, um, the numbers of Indigenous of of students who self-identified changed at that time as well. Um, so I don't know if if that is one of the reasons for the increase um, in numbers or or what it is, but I know I do know the numbers have increased. I wouldn't be able to tell you all the reasons why. Well the indigenization strategy I think right now is my most immediate goal. Um, I think once we have um, an official, uh, I think once we have the strategy in place, it will really help the university to lay out, um, strate I mean, strategic directions. That's what, uh, you know, the purpose of a strategy is. And I think universities really operate, they, they need, um, to see um, to see those strategic directions. It helps to allocate resources. It helps to identify what the priorities for this year are um, and what we need to focus on in, you know, let's say year one versus year two versus year three. Um, so I think that is my, my most immediate goal uh, long-term. I would like to see more Indigenous faculty. I'd like to see more Indigenous staff. Um, I would like to see this office um, increase the number of staff here so that we can um, 
do the work that we need to do um, in a good way. I think when uh, you have a handful of Indigenous staff working in offices like these, um, very often, um, well, there's only so much you can do. And I think to do the work that needs to be done, we need, we definitely need more staff. And I think through the development of the indigenization strategy that will um, support those goals because we'll have identified what the needs are and what the resources are required to accomplish those goals. I think it's important to recognize and remember all the people that have been doing this work for a very long time. Um, who have laid the groundwork for people like me and just coming into university in the last few years to be able to do this work. Um, I think of people like Marie Batiste who have um, who've been doing this for decades and um, Dr. Joanne Archibald who um, I heard speak a few times and just recently when I was in um, Victoria in November, she spoke to a group of Indigenous leaders um, at, within who are indige Indigenous senior leaders who are working within universities across the country. Um, and she told the story of Lady Laos and how... Um, I, I won't tell the whole story here, but how Lady Laos goes into a longhouse and um, there's a lot of dust in there because people haven't been using it for a long time, but she wants people to come back and start using the longhouse again. So she decides to clean it up and get rid of the dust. And she starts in one corner and she's got this whole long house to do. And she just starts by with her cedar broom and starts sweeping the floor. And um, and I think how, when we think of um, what she's doing there, we can compare to in some ways to what we're doing within universities. Like it's such a, it can seem like such a huge daunting task, but the work needs to be done. And we just start, we're, you know, in the corner doing what we can do. Um, and, but I think it's important um, to remember the work of not just those in university, but the people in all sectors um, right across the country who have really fought for um, fought for where we are today.